welcome you to our worship service this morning from Gordon Street Christian Church. We're thankful that you are joining with us in worship in the places where you are. I do remind you that at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, this morning, uh, we will be having an in-person worship here in the sanctuary. Uh, it is Scout Sunday. There are three Eagle Scouts who will be receiving their Eagle rank, and we are looking forward to that. If you are able to come and be with us, we certainly welcome you for that. Also, uh, this coming Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, in the parlor, uh, the Christian Women's Fellowship will be meeting, so please keep that in mind. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship is from the 25th Psalm, verses 4 and 5. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Our hymn of praise, number 725, is God of the Ages. Would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer? Lord, you have granted us mercy and grace. May your Holy Spirit help us to truly worship you with thanksgiving and praise. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you have given to us. We look upon our lives here upon this earth and we see where we have failed time and time again. We have sinned against you. We have worked and hurt each other. And we pray that by your great mercy and by your love, you will heal our differences, that you will heal us from our sins, that you will strengthen us against temptation. We pray that you will help us in our world to live together in peace. It is a beautiful world, and we have done much uh, to bring disaster to the world. And yet you continue to abide with us. Uh, during this season of the year, we are very mindful of how our Lord Christ came among us and knowing what was ahead loved us to the very end. And we pray that even as we go through this season of remembrance of his, his suffering, that we will draw closer to you, that we will be even more grateful for the sacrifice that he made and especially grateful that he overcame death and came back to us with grace and life and forgiveness and love. We pray for those who are sick. You know the things that they're going through. We pray that you will bless them with your healing touch. Strengthen them and, and help them to have the, the peace that passes all understanding through Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and who are hurting because of that loss. May your love comfort them and use us as instruments of love and comfort as well. We pray for those who are in authority over our nation and over all nations. Help them to turn away from evil and always choose to do good. Help them to lead us in pathways of righteousness and peace. We pray for your church in this place and your church everywhere in the world that we might be faithful in sharing the good news of your love for all people, the good news that you chose to come to us in, in the person of your son, Jesus Christ, that you chose to endure great things, horrible things even, for our sakes. And still you love us in spite of all we've done. Help us to spread the news of that great love for everyone. And may hearts of people everywhere be prepared to receive that news so that they might turn unto you and receive the salvation that you Offer to all. And now, O Lord, bless us as we read your holy word. Grant us insight and understanding. 
Help us that we might learn your ways. Help us that we might dedicate ourselves to living according to your will and your way. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our scripture text this morning is taken from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, beginning in verse 8 and going through verse 17. Listen for the word of the Lord. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh." When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our redeemer and our strength. Amen. I don't see how anyone can live long on this earth and observe the things going on who do not see that sin is serious. Not everybody may use the word sin. Not everybody has the vocabulary that we Christians have. But everyone can see the power of evil upon the earth. We can see how destructive it is, how it harms people, and not just people, how it harms other creatures and even the earth itself. I had a professor in in seminary at Duke. He was my theology professor, and I remember one day he said to the class that, I don't know whether you believe in Satan or not. He said, that's not of extreme importance. He said, but no matter whether you believe in him or not, you better believe in the power of sin and evil to do harm. He said, it is all around us everywhere. And it has a power that is greater than than our power to defeat it. And you know that's true. We can see that in the wars that people fight. We sometimes go into a war enthusiastic. We're full of righteous uh, anger against someone else because of something they have done wrong or that we perceive they have done wrong. We think we will go in there, we will clean things up, make things right, and come home again. But invariably, 
Once the spark of war has ignited, then the power of evil overtakes us and causes things that over which we have no power at all. In every war, there have been atrocities from both sides, no matter which side was wrong in the beginning. People tend to do things that they would not have done otherwise. In war, it gets out of hand and we cannot quite control all that happens in war. And that's the way evil is generally. Once it was set loose on the world, it had a power that we could not resist on our own, not always. And it had a power to go beyond what we ever expected in its destructiveness. Our scripture text this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, just a few chapters down from the creation and from the story of how Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. You recall the story. You recall how God created all things. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He divided the waters above the firmament from the waters below the firmament and he created dry land and he created living things and he created man and woman and placed them in a garden. And on the seventh day he rested, he looked and saw that all he had made was good, was very good. It was a virtual paradise. Things were as God intended them to be in the very beginning. But Adam and Eve decided not to trust God. They decided to give way to temptation and to go against what God had told them. And that seemingly insignificant sin of taking that fruit in the Garden of Eden when God had told them not to, brought sin into the world and misery into the world and distrust into the world and jealousy into the world and murder into the world and violence into the world. All, according to Paul, all creation changed when sin entered the picture. Even the creation itself groans, waiting for the revealing of the children of God, waiting for the power of God to restore all things. Our text, coming not so long after that, is a text of God's grace and mercy. You remember the story of Noah. It comes just prior to our text. God looked upon the world. He saw that there was violence in the world, sin in the world beyond what there should have been. And you know what the text says? It says something that is surprising to people when they think about it, because a lot of people think that God does things, knows everything, and God is not going to change his mind about anything. But it says that when God looked upon the earth and all that was going on and all the violence that was upon the earth, it grieved God that he had made us upon this earth. He was sorry that he had made us upon the earth. We were destroying ourselves, one another, and his own beautifully good creation. And God decided to start over again. And he got Noah to build an ark. 
and to place two of everything and seven of some things on the ark. And he sent a flood to destroy all flesh upon the earth. He was starting over again. And as horrible as that seems, we see in this the grace of God because our sins grieved God. Our sins hurt God. And yet he was willing not to destroy us completely. He was willing when all else failed to just start over again to give us a fresh start, a new start. And so in our text this morning, God says to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood now notice what God is doing covenant is very important in in the relationship between us and God A covenant is a little more than a contract. A covenant is uh, pretty much a commitment, a life commitment between one party and another. And many times a covenant involves both parties. There are certain stipulations for each party. But in this covenant, This covenant is between God and his creation upon earth. Not just human beings, but all living things on the earth. It is a gift of God's grace and mercy. God knew us. He knew the thoughts of our hearts. He knew, according to the text, not this text, but a text, uh, but before this one in Genesis that the thoughts of men's hearts are evil from the beginning from the time that we are born there is sin in our lives there is evil working in our minds and working through us God knew that And yet God in his great love and grace and mercy looked upon us after the great flood and made a covenant with us that required nothing of us. He didn't say, if you do this, then I will. He didn't say, this is your part and this is my part. He said, this is what I am going to do. No stipulations on us. I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you. And as it reads further down, through all generations, the covenant has been established. God is showing grace and mercy. And we know that Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord, was not perfect. We read in the scripture how after the flood, after he had gotten out of the ark, after he had established himself in a home and had a vineyard, that Noah was far less than perfect, nor were his children perfect. And God knew what was coming down the road. He knew how sin and violence would multiply again. And look at our world today. There are wars that were started over nothing. There are wars that 
destroy and kill innocent people who had nothing to do with the initial problem in the beginning. The power of evil hurts those who are guilty as well as those who had nothing to do with the guilt in the beginning. But God, in his great mercy and grace, offers us a gift. He offers that he will abide with us. The people of that day and time who received this word, uh, Noah and his sons and their wives and their children, they had no idea how God would show his grace and mercy again and again. They knew he had shown it to them. He had saved them in the ark. He had blessed them to be able to survive the flood. He had blessed them that the children would multiply and that they would see children's children and maybe even their, those children another generation. And yet sin still was there. We see through all of scripture how God continues to reach out as he did here. Our sins come to the point of destroying us. God comes and rescues us. God gives us another chance. God helps us start over. He forgives us and blesses us. And so it is here. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Isn't it a wonderful thing when we see the rainbow in the clouds? When the rain has come and we look up and the sun is beginning to shine and the rainbow comes out, it, it's a thrill to us. And we've seen it many times, but it still is a thrill to us to see it. I wonder how many people in this modern day and time look at that rainbow and remember what it stands for I wonder how many remember that it is a sign of God's covenant with us it's not a covenant that we will not be punished for our sins but it is, is a covenant that God never again will destroy all flesh with a flood. It is a covenant that reminds us of God's mercy, even when He has grieved over our sins, over our violence. He still has made the commitment that He will have mercy upon us, that He will remember the covenant that He made so long ago. You and I are blessed in that we have seen even greater than Noah saw. Noah saw God's willingness to bring salvation to his creation. But we have seen the extent to which our God will go to bring salvation to his creation. Because we have seen that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen that when violence was spread upon the earth and violence even was directed at the word made flesh, at the very Son of God, the very 
presence of God with us, we turned against him and were violent against him and tortured him to death on a cross. And it's not that he could not have delivered himself. He could have. He is God. He has the power, the presence of God. At his voice, the world was made. And yet because he loved us and refused to harm us, he was willing to accept our violence and suffering that we inflicted upon him. He was willing to taste even death for our sakes. And then by the power of God's love, defeated sin and death defeated the forces of evil. He showed that evil, as powerful as it is in comparison to us, is no power against God. And he came back to us, offering to us the gift of forgiveness and love and life. It started a long, long time ago. God showing his mercy. God making a covenant with us to be merciful toward us and to keep us from being completely destroyed. And then it becomes something that is amazing that God's love for us is so great that he would endure what he endured in Christ Jesus our Lord to bring us life and salvation. We live in a world of violence today. And I am sure when God looks upon it, he grieves in his own heart. But God knows the end from the beginning. He knows how he will bring about through the power of his love, the transformation of his people. And he will bring about their salvation and he will bring about that perfect kingdom at some point, at some time of God's own choosing. We are in process. We are living and growing and learning. But the time will come as it came in Christ Jesus so long ago and is still working itself out with us even now. The time will come when the kingdom of God will reign everywhere in every heart. Lives will be changed and all God's creation will give glory and honor to him. Thanks be to God.
After the great flood, God made a covenant, an unconditional covenant, with all humanity, with all living creatures upon the face of the earth. And he placed a bow in the clouds as a sign of the covenant. Sunday after Sunday, we come together to the Lord's table. And here, we also are benefiting from a covenant that God made, a new covenant, a covenant of love and grace, a covenant that gives life and salvation. At this table, this bread is a reminder of the sacrifice that our Lord made for us. This cup is a sign of his blood shed for us. At this table, the living Lord who came back from the dead, who offered forgiveness and grace and mercy and life and love, he presides at this table and he invites you and you and you and you and me and all of us, all who will come to this table where we find forgiveness and receive the gift of life through his life that was given for us. Some of us might say, well, how can God forgive me for what I have done? Well, the Lord has forgiven us for his death, for his crucifixion, for the suffering that he went through. And he can certainly forgive us for anything else that we might do, might have done. And so he offers his forgiveness and life. And at this table, we remember the new covenant in Christ Jesus our Lord, a covenant whereby he gives us life and blessing. A covenant whereby we are transformed. We're not perfect yet, but by his power, we will become all that he wants us to be. Let us pray. Lord, for the gift of your love, for the gift of your life, we give you thanks. We come to this table and partake of bread and cup, and we remember how you gave your body and your blood for us. We partake of it, food that was provided at the cost of your own life, and our lives are enriched. We are nourished in body and in spirit, and so we give you thanks. At this table, you bind us to yourself in love, but you also bind us one to another in love. Help us that we might glorify you together, that we might receive the gift that you give through your Holy Spirit and through your own body, that we might become what you want us to be, and that we might serve you faithfully. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner also, after supper, Jesus took the cup, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink you this, and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, we have not earned the gift that you have given us. You have given out of your love and out of your own abundance without thought of us returning anything to you. And yet, by the power of your love that has touched our hearts, we are learning to love you and to love one another. May the presence and power of your Holy Spirit so work in us that we will be transformed so that in time to come we will certainly love you and love others around us even as you have loved us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever.